simply go to bbc.com forward slash news. Now, from cities to space, where today history was made, a decade after it was launched, the unmanned Rosetta spacecraft finally caught up with a comet. It will now fly alongside the comet for more than a year, and its findings could reveal more about the origins of life here on Earth. Our science editor, David Chukman, has all the details. The moment they'd waited 10 years for. We're at the comet. Yes! Relief and delight at the European Space Agency at an amazing rendezvous with a comet. As the spacecraft approaches, the images become sharper. No one has ever seen a comet in this detail before. A strange, jagged landscape is revealed, with cliffs and ridges, boulders the size of houses, an alien mix of rock and ice. It's what the Rosetta mission is about. Being this close is why we're doing this mission. We've rendezvoused with the comet. We're travelling in the same orbit around the sun as this comet, and we're going to continue doing that for over a year. We're escorting the comet around the sun. It's taken a decade for the Rosetta spacecraft to catch up with the comet. It's so far away that each radio command takes 23 minutes to get there. But the encounter is right on target. What's remarkable about this mission is that the comet is racing along at about 34,000 miles an hour. But the team here have managed to get the Rosetta spacecraft to match its speed and fly alongside it. That's never been achieved before. But the plan is to go one step further. If all goes well, a small lander will be released later this year to drift down onto this uncharted world to see exactly what it's made of but no one can be sure if this is possible. Already scientists are studying the comet to look for a landing site. Imagine trying to pick somewhere safe on this bizarre surface. There's a lot that's still unknown. We should expect something that could range from the hardness of concrete to the softness of candy floss. Uh, that is what makes this kind of mission sort of different to something like going to Mars, where you kind of reasonably certain you know what the surface is going to feel like. And the reason for all this effort, well, comets may have collided with the early Earth and brought it water and carbon, ingredients that were vital for the process of kick-starting life. Visiting a comet may show if that's true. It's hard to believe, though, in these latest pictures, that a landscape this barren could ever hold anything useful to life on Earth. But the task of understanding this comet has only just begun. David Truckman, BBC News at European Mission Control in Germany. And for more on the Rosetta's historic achievement, I spoke a brief time ago with Derek Pitts. He's the chief astronomer at the Franklin Institute Science Museum in Philadelphia. Derek, just how important is Rosetta's mission to our understanding of the universe and how we got here? Well, what Rosetta is going to do for us is it's going to help us better understand what comets really are all about. You know, one of the main portions of the mission is to try to characterize what the nucleus is like, try to understand some about the dynamics of the behavior of comets as they orbit around close to the sun, and also help us to uh, get an idea of what the chemical composition of the nucleus is. And these are all really important because comets are very pristine warehouses, if you will, uh, storage bins of what the early history of the solar system was. And if we can study comets in depth, we can better understand some more about how the solar system formed and hopefully extend that knowledge to how other solar systems forms too. But to study the comet, you've seen that rocky surface of it. Rosetta's got to land a, a lander on it. How difficult is that going to be when you look at the shape of the comet? Well, it's going to be really tricky for two reasons. Number one, it's tricky because of the uneven surface. So they have to find a spot that's going to be the smoothest location they can that's actually going to serve the science needs as well. But they've had a little bit of, uh, there's been a little bit of experience in space exploration before with asteroids, trying to land a spacecraft on an asteroid. And because of the small size and low gravity, that means that there's a good possibility that a spacecraft trying to land could bounce off. So what they're going to do is they're going to use anchors to grab hold and pull the spacecraft down. And then once the spacecraft actually lands, and this is the Phile lander that will get there in November, they'll actually try to anchor it down using screws to pull it down and hold it onto the surface. 
So it indeed is very, very tricky and some very sophisticated engineering that uh, hasn't been done before. So this is a mission full of firsts. Sounds incredible. And is that all going to be controlled remotely? Hmm, quite the Yes, story. it is going to be controlled remotely. It's going to be controlled... Yeah, uh, yeah, and it's and it's and it's quite a job to re to control everything uh, remotely. There's some autonomous operation and some remote control operation, and with the 23 minute delay, that's going to complicate things even further. But the operators of the spacecraft have done very, very well so far, getting it to the right place at the right time, and uh, everything's going really well so far. In an age of instant gratification and budget austerity, just briefly, was this worth the cost and the wait? Yeah, there's no question that this is worth the cost and the wait. Uh, it's not a whole lot of money to get a whole lot of information about a history of the solar system that we can't derive any other way. Derek Pitts, thank you very much. Thank you. So did life on Earth begin on a comet? You may have to wait for a few years to find out, but it's going to be worth the wait, I assure you. Well, that brings today's broadcast.